Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Prime News, and as always, before we get into the news, I want to remind you to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. I also want to remind you guys to drop a like on this video. Let's see if we can get this particular Prime News up to 150 likes. That would be amazing. I know we can do it if we all band together. And hey, why not share this video around and subscribe for more content? Alright, without further ado, let's get into that news. Gearbox today had a presentation at PAX East, a presentation that uh, had a lot of technical difficulties to say the least, but we have three major stories to talk about coming out of it. The first one being that Bulletstorm Duke of the Switch edition is coming to, well, I guess you can guess it, Nintendo Switch some point this summer. Uh, they didn't really show any gameplay or anything of it off, but basically it's just saying, hey, look, this game is coming. We kind of had it speculated and rumored that Bulletstorm might be announced at this event coming to Switch. So it's nice to see it'll have all the DLC, including, you know, Duke from Duke Nukem in there. I know some people thought it was weird back in the day when he was like a pre-order bonus, but uh, he's in there. He's included. The version of it's literally named after him. Uh, so he's, they're kind of pushing him to the front of the marketing. This was a game originally released in 2011, then fully remastered as the full clip edition in 2017 on playstation 4 and xbox one so hey it's on switch it's cool i guess uh the big quote around this is essentially the team behind it as soon as switch came to market and they got their hands on the device they're like yeah we want to put bullet storm on it now hopefully someday they go yeah we want to put borderlands on it because our next bit of news deals with that so at the end of gearbox's magic event today uh literally they performed a magic trick at the event that's the thing that happened. Um, Borderlands 3 was announced, and it looks really good. If you like Borderlands, you're probably going to like this game. Now, it did not announce any platforms yet, so if you're a Switch owner, I guess you can hold out hope, although I'll give you some reasons here why maybe you shouldn't in a moment. But yes, Borderlands 3 is coming to, well, something, sometime, somewhere. No platforms listed no release window listed, probably not going to arrive this year if I had to guess, uh, because they have a whole bunch of other Borderlands stuff going on this year, uh, including uh, a, a version of Borderlands 2 with all the DLC. Uh, they also have uh, basically a 4K pack coming out that um, is like a collection that will have all of the Borderlands games so far all bundled together, all of them in 4K. Uh, so I think that's really exciting for people that have like an Xbox One X or a PC, PlayStation 4 Pro, that kind of thing. Obviously, none of this has to do with Nintendo Switch. So while there was speculation about Borderlands 2 and that image maybe having to do with Switch, it really had to do with the fact that they're doing this 4K texture pack and all that jazz. So that's really good news for Borderlands fans out there. Um, again, I would love to see all this stuff on Switch, but this stuff was not announced as coming to Switch. And Borderlands 3, uh, if I had to guess, probably isn't coming to Switch either. Uh, but hey, we got Bulletstorm. Maybe there's another Bulletstorm in the works. That would be kind of cool. But they had nothing to announce about it today. Uh, so hey, whatever. Let's move on. We learned today through an FAQ on the Wolfenstein Youngblood official website that Panic Button is handling the port of this game. It's not too surprising since Panic Button also did Doom 2016 and as well as Wolfenstein 2, The New Order. They were the ones that ported those games to Switch where people seem to be pretty happy with those ports. Not a surprise that they ended up going back to that company, that being Bethesda, contacting panic button and being like hey we want you to port this as well for the day and date release uh we also know that panic button is also porting doom eternal so they're basically just repeating what they did the last year and a half uh that's exciting news for me and i'm pretty stoked about it so uh at least it's with a company that we can trust will make at least a a, a playable quality port of this game on switch do you guys remember the breath of the wild champion amiibo I know I do, because they sold out and I never got any. Well, they might be getting a reprint. So what happened is a Taiwanese retailer has informed consumers that on April 10th, they will be getting a full restock of the Champion Amiibo Pack. Uh, this has not been stated anywhere else. We don't know if this will come to the U.S. or I don't know, anywhere else in the world, to be honest. Uh, but it does suggest that a reprint is in the works, and this could lead to, obviously, them selling out again because they sold out in the first place. And uh, I really want them to come back because I would like an opportunity to buy them uh, without having to keep, like, you know, refreshing buttons on my computer to 
grab one of like a thousand of them that they end up reprinting so uh i always felt it was weird they didn't reprint that one in the first place uh bringing it back i don't think it really signifies anything i know there's a certain rumor floating out there about zelda but uh we'll get into that in a little bit an online retailer called Media Market has FIFA 20 listed for Nintendo Switch. This isn't surprising since FIFA 18 and FIFA 19 also came to Switch. Now, FIFA was a lesser version of FIFA 18 and FIFA 19 on other platforms. It used an older engine. It was basically like an older version of FIFA with updated rosters and a couple new modes. Uh, we don't know if this is going to be the same thing, just another version, or if this will actually be on par with other systems, at least feature set wise and gameplay wise uh, because there are rumors out there that Frostbite is being ported to Switch and if Frostbite, the engine that runs FIFA on the other platforms is on Switch, it opens up the doors to bring the full FIFA experience to Switch. This also is a good sign if FIFA 20 is coming because it does suggest that FIFA 18 and FIFA 19 are selling well enough to continue to keep coming to Switch. Just like if they eventually announce the next NBA 2K game coming, that would be three NBA 2K games in a row well, if you guys remember, Wii U could only get one. So that would be a very good sign that these games are selling significantly better on Switch than these companies are accustomed to seeing on prior Nintendo platforms. All good signs for future third-party support on the Switch. There's kind of this big rumor floating out there. It was kind of talked about by Liam Robertson. He's the source on all of this and then first reported by Spawn Wave, a fellow YouTuber. And it has to do with a new game from From Software. Now, a lot of outlets have already confirmed that From Software, the makers of Sekiro, the Dark Souls series, Bloodborne, etc., have two other projects in the works. Now, Activision was a publisher on Sekiro. And while one of the projects a lot of people think is the next Bloodborne game, probably coming for PlayStation 5, they are it's a second game that we don't know much about that has people speculating. And according to Liam Robertson, uh, that game is another Souls game. Not a surprise. Obviously, the Souls games have been the most popular games that From Software has made in quite some time. So you have the Souls games. It's another Souls game. It is open world, which is very different from the way the Souls games were in the past. They were a lot more linear. Uh, there's going to be multiple kingdoms that you can go to at any time. Uh, if you kill the leaders at those kingdoms, you gain extra special abilities. Uh, a way to think about this is kind of look at how the Mega Man series works. You know, you beat one of the bosses, you gain their ability. That's kind of how this would work in this game. And the most intriguing part of this rumor is that George R.R. R. Martin is one of the lead writers for this game. For those who don't know, George R.R. R. Martin is the one that penned the Game of Thrones series. Well... I guess it's A Song of Ice and Fire, book-wise, but, but the Game of Thrones TV version of it that has its final season this year, that's all George R.R. R. Martin. Everything's based on his work. He is widely considered one of the best writers in the world. And, yeah, to see him working on a video game, to see him create an original something for this uh, is uh, honestly very shocking. Now, again, just a rumor. Can't confirm any of it. I will say that Liam Robertson doesn't typically open his mouth unless he has some pretty reliable sources on this. He even admits that like when he heard this from the people he heard it from, it's like, what are you talking about? Open world Dark Souls, okay. Multiple kingdoms, Mega Man-like ability stealing. Uh, George R.R. R. Martin's really involved in this? Like, what? He's the lead writer? Like, it all just sounds completely unbelievable, which is probably why it's true, because when you hear something this crazy from reliable sources, it's pretty hard to yank your chain. Um, it's not April 1st yet, so there's no April Fool's here. Uh, I think this is really interesting, and I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, it's not going to be coming to Switch. Uh, it'll probably be PlayStation, Xbox, whatever, but uh, you never know. We did get Dark Souls remastered on Switch, so maybe uh, this is a potential Switch release. I don't know, but uh, he thinks, and Spawn Wave and Liam Robertson kind of concluded that it's something we might actually hear about at E3. Stalker 2, the sequel to the original Stalker game, uh, has, well, it was actually kind of announced a long time ago, and most people just figured it it's done, right? Like, the Stalker 2 website's been out forever, hasn't had any updates, There's, you know, it's done. They're, they're not making that game anymore. That just happens. It, it got ambitious, too big for its britches, and got canned, right? That's been the assumption for many, many years. Well, 
Stalker 2's website got updated today with new official art. And this has led people to obviously speculate that there's going to be more. And you don't even really need to speculate much more than that because there's actually a tagline on the website that says, expect news about this game soon. So yeah, Stalker 2 is actually happening. I uh, don't know what platforms it'll be on at this point, but it's just exciting to know that a beloved, um, what was supposed to become like a, a long-standing franchise is actually going to come back with a new entry. Here's hoping it can live up to the original game because uh, the original game was fantastic. I don't know if you guys played it, but it, man, I have, I have some very fond memories of the original Stalker. So Stalker 2, uh, get hyped. And our last story for today actually deals with a... Uh, not so much a rumor as it is speculation on some hirings happening at Nintendo's Monolith Soft. I made a video on this and you can get more information if you would like from that video down in the description. But essentially Monolith Soft is hiring a whole bunch of people for a Zelda project. And the people they're hiring are actually like the exact same positions they used to be hiring for an action game that looked like it was based in the medieval ages. So what does this all mean? Uh, it just means that Monolith Soft is hiring people that they're going to be using to make a Zelda game. Uh, does this mean Monolith Soft is making their own Zelda game? Not necessarily. Does it mean that Monolith Soft is making a spin-off game? Not necessarily. Does it mean that Monolith Soft is porting, you know, the Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD, or maybe doing Skyward Sword HD? Not necessarily. What we do know about Monolith Soft and their involvement with Zelda is they have actually been like a secondary dev team on many of the Zelda games of late. Uh, I think the earliest one they worked on was Skyward Sword, and when I say worked on, no, we're not saying that Monolith Soft was involved in the development of these games right away, but they were brought in as additional team members to the OG Zelda team to get Skyward Sword done. And that also is around the time that Nintendo decided to merge their handheld and console Zelda teams to make one Zelda team. So how it used to operate is uh, Nintendo had two Zelda teams internally uh, that Eiji Onomo was overseeing, that Miyamoto used to oversee, and uh, they merged them together so it's one Zelda team with the idea of getting games out quicker. But it was weird because games haven't come out quicker. Um, in fact, the gap to Skyward Sword and then the gap from Skyward Sword to Breath of the Wild is long. And you might say, well, what about A Link Between Worlds? What about uh, Triforce Heroes and, and Link's Awakening coming? A lot of these games are handled by other companies that Nintendo just hires to do, such as Grezzo. Uh, the Wind Waker HD was handled internally, but then Twilight Princess HD wasn't. There is a lot of Nintendo outsourcing a lot of Zelda things, and now we obviously know of Cadence of Hyrule uh, as an indie crossover game, and obviously Hyrule Warriors. So you got to remember, they consolidated the Zelda team to make games come out faster, and they're actually coming out slower. That being said, it is well known at this point that on Breath of the Wild, more people from Monolith Soft, which consists of around 200 employees, worked on Breath of the Wild then worked on Xenoblade Chronicles 2. That's right, the literal studio that's like dedicated to making Xenoblade had more employees working on Zelda than that. So to see them hiring on specifically for Zelda tells me a couple things. That one, there's probably multiple studios inside of Monolith, and two, one of those studios that contains a majority of their staff is obviously dedicated to helping out the Zelda team, and or they're just permanent members of the Zelda team, or they're making their own Zelda game. That's always a possibility. I don't think that Monolith Soft is actually making their own Zelda game, like heading up their own Zelda game, but I do think that they are heavily involved in the next Zelda game because they were heavily involved in the last Zelda game. And you can see some of those influences in how Breath of the Wild handled open world. So I do think it's very interesting to see where this is going to lead in the future. It's nice to see more talked about in terms of hiring people on that likely has nothing to do with Link's Awakening, uh, that remastered version. They're just calling it Link's Awakening, but it's a remastered version. Uh, it's interesting to see uh, some progress towards whatever the next Zelda game is. I do think we might see the next Zelda game at some point next year. But yeah, they're hiring on a whole bunch of people for a Zelda project. I think that's really, really cool. And anytime there's Zelda news out there that indicates, hey, we might actually see something from a new uh, you know, sequel, prequel, whatever, whatever comes after Breath of the Wild, uh, at some point in the future, I kind of want to bring it up because Zelda's my favorite franchise. And uh, I just like to be hyped about Zelda. Um, I'm... I'm I've never been so hyped about an indie game in my life until Cadence of Hyrule was announced. Uh, and I, man, Link's Awakening, you guys saw my live reaction to that. If you didn't, here's a, here's a, re, uh, here's a look back at that. Oh. 
<laughs> Link's Awakening! Link's Awakening! Link's Awakening! <laughs> yeah, I broke my green screen. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you for tuning into this episode of Prime News. It's been awesome. I hope you guys enjoy the new intro cards I've been doing with the timestamps. I didn't want to over uh, do too much text on them. I thought that would look kind of bad. So it's just, uh, hey, you might not know exactly what the story is, but that's why you're here to watch Prime News, right? Right. All right. Well, I love your faces, and I'll catch you in the next video.